Okay, so the reason why I look like this is because it's like 8.30 in the morning and I need to finish this video before I go to school because this is like the best lighting I'll have in the day because when I get home it's like already dark so we need to do this now and that's why I'm sorry if it seems rushed So hey guys! Today I'm going to talk about the books that I read in October I read 8 books I think or 2 comics and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 books and I think it was like a very mediocre month. The books I read were good, but there was only like a very limited number of like wow books. I think there's only one. But still, let's get into it. So the first book I read the month of October was The Caliban's War by James S.A. Corey. This is the second book in the Expand series. I read the first one and absolutely fell in love with this uh, sci-fi space opera. It is so good. The first one is about you following this captain who is taking a ship from the rings of Saturn taking ice so back to the asteroid belt so people can get water because uh, people have moved out from Earth. There's still people on Earth and Mars uh, and the other moons but you get to follow this new species called belters which um, live on the asteroid belt and it's really interesting and the main character is from Earth and he has like seven parents. It's really interesting and um, in this book, it's kind of the aftermath of what happened in the first one, so you kind of see how the food storage uh, are suffering from this, like, zombie virus that broke loose in the first book. So I won't spoil too much, but this one is about, like, the food storage, and you get to follow way more characters in this one. The first one, you get to follow two characters, and this one, I think it's, like, four or even five, maybe. And I thought it was way too much to keep up with. I felt like the plot wasn't... The characters wasn't really connected into like a red line, you know, that a red thread that runs through the story. So at times I was a little bit more lost than I would have liked to be in this type of story because the sci-fi is really confusing already because it's all these new concepts. I wish it was a little bit more coherent in a way, if that makes sense. I still gave it four stars though. After that, I read The Two Dark Rains by Kendar Blake. This is the third book in the four book series, I think. Um, the first one is called Three Dark Crowns, so in this one you get to follow the aftermath of the two first one and in this world uh, basically they live on this island where the queen gives birth to three queens. One is elemental, one is poisoner, and one is uh, naturalist and then when they turn like 16 or something they have to kill each other and one gets to have the throat. And then this book is the third one, um, I don't know if it's because I read, when I read the first two books, I read them right after each other and I read them about one and a half years ago. Is it really that long? Yeah. And so I think that maybe um, I've kind of grown out of the story. It's a little bit too much young adult for me, but I, I think I, I still enjoyed it, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I did when I read the first two books. And we have the same situation for Wild Card by Marie Lu. The first one is really, really cool. It's all about this um, virtual game thing that everyone has these glasses for. And the main character is like a bounty hunter. And she accidentally like hacks her way into this game that is the Warcross game. Um, the creator of Warcross wants her to do a job for him. Um, yeah, so she basically goes from rich to successful in like a night and this is also the aftermath of that. Um, this book, I, I think I enjoyed it because it is like a fun quick read and I really like the concept of Warcross and I love when it's like virtual game stuff. I really like the parts of this book that was like a virtual game thing but I think there's too many like faults in the story. Like things that the author should have worked on, like technical things when it comes to um, the game and the sci-fi and how the lens things work, it, uh, the Neuralink as it's called. This one kind of took it to another level which was interesting but I still felt like it was not really complex enough and it maybe it's because I've been reading like adult sci-fi now <laughs> that I'm like uh this is so mediocre but it was still a fun read but definitely not as good as I thought the first one was, was when I read it. Next I read Paper Girls. This is a comic by Brian K. Vogan and Cliff Chang and I really like this comic because it's just so insane like there's so much like space travel, dimensional travel and stuff that I don't really know what's going on when I read it but it's still really good and something really funny about this one is that there's a quote in here and on the page there's literally like my birthday like this is the day I was born 
which is so weird like has that ever happened to you like nothing has ever happened to me like that which is literally the day I was born um I think I gave this four stars so it's pretty good but the previous one was better then I read uh, The Muse of Nightmares by Lainey Taylor. This is the second book. I think it's only going to be a duology for now, but there might be more uh, books in this world. So I first read Strange the Dreamer two, one and a half years ago, and I fell in love with it. And after that, I read Lainey Taylor, Taylor's other books. And then I read this one this month. And I realized like when I read this that they're all in like the same world. And I didn't realize that when I was reading it. But like the same world, I mean like, you know how Brandon Sanderson has like the Cosmere universe. By the way, click in the cards if you, cards, cards, cards. If you wanna see uh, my high fantasy book recommendations, this is definitely one of them. So in this one, it was just like, oh, Lady Taylor's writing is so good. And I think because I've read her previous books, you can just see how much she develops and her writing is just so good. And it is a young adult book, but I just love it so much, like, it is so good. I can't even, you know, a book is so good, like, you can't really say anything that's, like, makes sense, because everything you say is like, uh, uh, uh. So that's how I felt about this book. It was really good. I highly recommend the series. And the first series that she has, the Daughter of Smoke and Bone series, um, is connected to this one. And I think it's fun if you read both, even though the first one series isn't as good as this one, because when you realize how they're connected, like, maybe it's like a da for everyone else, but since I read them not in order, I didn't realize it until I read this one, and it was such a great, like, moment. I loved it. It's like about winged creatures and gods and stuff and a hidden city and magical words and books and stuff. And, ah, magical powers. It's really, really great. Um, yes. And then I read A Record of a Spaceborn Few by Becky Chambers. This is the third book in the, uh... Wayward trilogy, Wayward's Wayward Wayfarer series. Um, so they're all companion no no novels to each other. You don't need to read them in order, but they, they are in chronological order, but they're all with different characters. So you can definitely read them all separately, though I do recommend reading them in order. So the first one I read, um, The Long Way to Small Angry Planet, it was way before I started booktube, and I think because of that, I only read like 20 pages before I went to bed and stuff. I don't remember that much of it, um, but the second book, book was definitely my favorite as I remember it. There are definitely a slow series, and I think the reason for that is because there is no plot curve. Like, you're just following these characters in their daily life, and you kind of just have to deal with the fact that um, nothing is really happening. You're just following their life and their e everyday um, issues and struggles in a space world. This is also a space opera, kind of, so there are uh, living in space and stuff. And in this book, you get to follow this, I, it's called the Fleet. Uh, yeah, so a Fleet, which is kind of this created spaceship where humans are living after they left Earth. So this one explores the mechanisms of the fleet. Um, so you get to follow all these characters. I also think this one has too many characters, although each character has their own um, charm, I guess. Um, there is a two-year-old that is mentioned in this book and the two-year-old is like so funny. And I can totally relate because it wasn't that long ago that my little brother was two years old. Um, yeah, so that was really cool. But you get to follow this person who basically works with funerals and um, making earth out of people to then build the crops and how you can see the cycle and how uh, Becky Chambers has created this dynamic world thinking about how, how we would live um, if we went to space and then you follow this um, alien who comes here to do a research project and this teenage boy who is struggling to like with puberty and stuff and it's really interesting because you get to follow all these ages an old lady and and it all comes together very nicely to get a very good perspective but it doesn't have a plot really. And that's the struggle with it. So, um, but it is very philosophical and it gives you a lot. But I think I just give it three or four stars uh, because it is a slow book. Then I read Saga Volume 9. This is a recent release as well. This was really good. I really enjoyed it, but I think I, I gave it actually five stars. I enjoyed it more than uh, the previous books. And I don't really remember why. It's like one of those sci-fis that I think at one point I'll just read them all after each other so I can get a better um, understanding of the world as a whole. Uh, but it's a really, really great sci-fi. You get to follow this 
uh, these two species, one from the moon of the planet and one from the planet, and then how they have a baby and how the whole solar system is basically out to get them because they started like this um, war. The narrator is their ch child and as she grows up, the she grows up throughout the comics, uh, which is a really nice effect. And I saw in the back of the book you can buy like merchandise and there is this one shirt right here that says like high as fuck and this is like one of the characters <laughs> from the previous uh, comic and I think it was a really cool t-shirt. Yeah, it's just, it's a really good series. Oh, so great. Okay, and lastly I read um, A Night of Cake and Puppets. This is also, uh, I think it's like a novella by Lainey Taylor. This one takes place after the second book of the Smoke and Bone series. I was never planning to read this because it's kind of like a silly book. I think I gave it three stars. Yeah, because it's like it's like a love story between these two characters, uh, the main character's best friend and her boyfriend, and it's really romantic and really cute and has a tiny bit of magic in it, uh, but it's like so cheesy and a part of me loves it, but a part of me is like uh, done with it. So uh, I'm glad I read it, but I, I mean, I probably wouldn't recommend it. But since I've read the series, and um, yeah. Mm. So those are all the books that I read in October. I hope you got some good book recommendations. If not, yeah, the high fantasy is like the best books almost I ever read. So I hope you guys all have a great reading month in October. Tell me any good books that you read um, lately and any books, good books you're planning to read in the future. So I hope you guys all have a really, really great day, magical month, magical day. And I'll see you guys soon. Bye-bye.